Hey, hello YouTube. In today's video, we're going to take a look at this HP ProLiant ML115 Generation 5 server. This was picked up at a local thrift store for about 10 euros and uh, yeah, basically just got it because it looked interesting. And I think I can make a good number of uh, interesting videos about it. So uh, yeah, let's take a look around the physical tour of the machine first. Uh, on the front, there's not a whole lot to see. We have a DVD drive, which is broken. We have a power button, which is not broken, with two indicator LEDs. We have two USB 2.0 ports, and that's basically it. All the slits you see here are for ventilation purposes. It will pull the air through the front and then out the back. Once we open the machine up, you can see what I mean by that. And uh, yeah, it's basically because all of the hard drive cages are located behind the front panel. Again, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. Let's turn the machine around. There's nothing to see on the back, uh, on the sides rather. The back is also not all that interesting. We have a big power supply up here. It does appear to be a somewhat standard form factor, at least uh, connector wise. So you can easily replace this unit with another one if you have to. It's 365 watts from the top of my head. Uh, so pretty powerful for uh, ready standards at least. In terms of I.O. on the back here, we have PS2 ports for mouse and keyboard in the exact reverse order, keyboard and mouse. <laughs> VGA here. Serial for USB 2.0 ports and onboard Broadcom Gigabit Ethernet. There is a blank here for a LightSize 100C module. That's optional, you can buy that and uh, you get some remote management and not PMI. Four PCI slots down there. They're all PCI Express, by the way, which uh, is very interesting. No PCI support on this guy. All right, so let's uh, take the side panel off and take a look around inside. In fact, before we do, let's actually take a look at the technical reference label that HP includes with their servers. It will tell you everything you need to know about your particular server. In the A section here, we can see everything in terms of chassis layout, what's, what's there and what isn't, and uh, various LEDs, bays, etc. Just an overall uh, layout of the physical machine over there. In the B section, we have some simple service information for where you can find some resources in terms of driver support, um, getting in touch with HP for uh, other kinds of support, hardware support or otherwise. In the C section, we see all the storage device locations and settings. Apparently this was available with uh, SAS drives. My model is SATA only. In the D section, we have a layout of the system board. Everything we can find on there, we can see in this section. The E section has all the cabling layouts and all the power cables, etc. are located in section F. All very interesting. Also, one thing to note, if we pan down a little bit, we can see sort of the production of this machine, and it dates to the 20th of October, 2009. And here we have the inside of the machine. We have a fairly standard cooler on top of our AMD processor here. Because it is an ML115, the 5 in the HP model numbers always designates an AMD processor. We have a very big fan here in the back that will uh, definitely pull enough air through the hard drive cages over here from the front to the back and then out the case. It's a very effective fan, let me tell you that. Once it's in idle, it's, it's fairly quiet. It's really not too much of a burden to have next to your desk or whatever. So I wouldn't recommend running a server next to your desk, regardless of that. But anyway, it's definitely powerful enough for that. On top, we have two five and a quarter inch bays, which are slightly out of shot. All the bays are labeled. This is bay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. From what I gather, if this system should support SAS, I would expect something like a backplane to mount to this, but I haven't done really any research to that. Don't need SAS support in here anyway, so it's kind of pointless uh, hunting for parts like that, which will be very expensive now that this server has been uh, end of support for so long. I think the Generation 5 in general was discontinued around 2013, 2014 in terms of overall support from HP. No more drivers, no more software patches, etc. Again, no one when this system was about 5 years old, so makes sense. 
Uh, going around the board again, we have four RAM slots here on the, above the CPU. These are two gigabyte modules now. It used to have four one gigabyte modules installed, and now it has four two gigabyte modules. The official max RAM HP uh, gives up for this uh, for this machine is eight gigabytes, so it's been maxed out already. This is DDR2 ECC memory, unbuffered ECC that is, so not the uh, typical fully buffered DIMMs that you see on uh, servers of the era like the uh, DL380 or uh, even Mac Pros and uh, Dell PowerEdge 2900 series, stuff like that. Going down, we have a couple of PCI Express slots. I was actually wrong, there is a bottom PCI slot there. Just one. PCI Express 1X, 8X, and 16X, respectively. VRMs are over here. And the SATA ports are scattered around this bottom bit here. We seem to have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, six SATA ports. Which makes sense, since we have six bays to populate. Regular 24-pin uh, uh, ATX power there. Regular ATX 4-pin power here for the CPU. And overall, uh, pretty standard looking. CPU under here, by the way, is the AMD Opteron 1354, I think it is. It's a quad-core 2.2 gigahertz. This is a socket AM2 Plus CPU. It's basically equivalent to the first generation of the AMD Phenom. So, uh, yeah, pretty old, but still supports most of the instruction sets that you need today. So, it's not terrible. Let's uh, take Trump and Loft, take a look at uh, the situation there. All right, and here is the front of the machine. Here we have a big old blank for the top five and a quarter inch bay. The VROM drive over here. Here we have the front panel unit that the uh, front panel clips around. We also have a nice little array of screws down here. We have four screws here for an optical drive, and all the other ones here are for hard drives. HP just decided to, you know, let's give them something back. Let's give them the screws they need to put in the hard drives in this machine. Now, currently there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws left. So that means this server probably had one drive installed by default from the factory. One drive was later added. And uh, yeah, all those screws were lost in the, in the past because I didn't get it with any hard drives. And uh, the remaining two are still there. So this system probably ran a RAID 1 uh, configuration. It has a Windows Web Server 2008 R2 license on it. So it probably runs a web server for possibly around 12, 13 years. And then finally was discontinued when uh, Windows Server 2008 R2 was no longer considered safe. And uh, when the world started moving towards uh, TLS 1.2, which Server 2008 R2 cannot do. So again, we talked about the airflow before. You have to take this grade out. It's honestly a great looking grate. So that's great. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you've got the two drive bays here, two drive bays here, separated by this little piece of metal here. And uh, let's see if we can get a better look inside there, so you can see the path the airflow has to take. I always find that particularly amusing. There we go. So now you can exactly see the point of view of the hard drives in relation to that big fan. You can also see that the uh, cable here is a bit in the way currently, but you know, if you cable manage that out of the way somewhat, it's still a pretty clear path anyway to that fan. And uh, if you're not running two terribly hot fans, so, or fans, <laughs> drives rather, like uh, 15K RPM SAS drives, I think you'll find that this is absolutely fine. So, uh, yeah, overall, uh, pretty fun uh, little server, don't you think? Alrighty then, let's turn it on. Headphone users should probably turn the volume down a little bit. And no, this is not it. There's more to come.
And there we go. There it is post. Not too bad. I can definitely tell you it was worse when we got the system. It was pretty dirty, so I ended up cleaning the fans out, cleaning the front intake out. That crate that you saw in front of the drives was completely caked on with dust, and the heatsink was pretty disgusting too. So yeah, fresh thermal paste, good clean. Really a good thing to do. Right, that clock is now off by two hours. Let's fix that. Anyway, we can see here we have an HP Polite ML115 Generation 5 with a BIOS data of 2009, 8GB of RAM, 2.2GHz quad-core Opteron CPU. Not a whole lot we can configure here. Does have virtualization turned on. One very interesting thing about this server is that is this actually uses an NVIDIA chipset. This server uses the NVIDIA 570 chipset from the top of my head, which actually supports RAID. So yeah, you can actually enable the RAID function here. So what you typically find these days is that HP just um, integrates something like they call their HP Smart Array B series, which is basically a software RAID controller built into the built onto the board, usually built into the CPU even, or the Northbridge, or PCH. And uh, this is a very similar way of doing things, but, you know, it's still fun to see NVIDIA, especially written with uh, the lowercase n and then the capital V. It's been a long time since I've seen that. Uh, and we have the serial port, which is enabled. I don't need to see or edit anything here. Yep, it's the MCP55 Northbridge. Uh, Alright, power management settings. Not that interesting. We have no logs, we shouldn't have any. Here we can also see that our Lights Out 100 device is absent. We saw that because it had a blanking plate in the back. Pixie Boot is enabled. Let's actually disable that. We're not going to Pixie Boot this system. Here's our CD-ROM DVD drive that's broken. It does show up, but it's definitely busted. And that's basically it. Not a whole lot to see. Let's just uh, let it do its post thing. And now it will boot into its currently installed operating system, which is test install of Xen Server 7.2. I haven't done any videos on Xen Server before, but, you know, maybe I will. Definitely one of uh, the more unique hypervisors still on the market. Primarily targeted towards uh, Citrix services, of course, but... At my uh, current day job, we actually used to support a couple of these, actually still do. Uh, the older versions, Xen Server 6. But anyway... This seems to run just fine on here as well. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's get to, towards uh, ending this video. So, what are my plans with this server? Well, I think what we're going to do is do something like a little bit of a uh, marathon of videos on this machine and uh, see what we can make of it. For instance, installing Windows 10, maybe even Windows 11 on it, seeing how that works. Um, Probably not too well, so because we won't have any graphics acceleration, I don't think, but anyway, we'll try. And uh, maybe some other hypervisors, perhaps. Um, maybe take a look at uh, maybe turning the system into a NAS, because we have four three and a half inch bays in the front. It's not that much of a power hungry um, server. Can you, you could even downgrade this to like a 35 watt CPU. They're not available in quad core, I don't think, but they're available in dual core, which is fine for storage, honestly. Something like that. If you have any other suggestions, 
of course. Feel free to leave them in the comments below or send me an email and I'll see what I can incorporate. Anyways, that's it for today's video. I thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.